Hi there, today I'm going to be working on this 2014 Corsa D, it's a 1.3 diesel. Um, the problem it's having is there is a warning light on the dash uh, which came on when the customer had just turned on their air conditioning. So we're going to check the lights on the dash for a start. Okay, so we're in the car itself. I'll switch the ignition on. Perfect. I will try and start it up. Okay, and it is this light here that the customer's complained of. So we're going to start with uh, scanning for, for any fault codes. Okay, so I've got the launch scanner. Uh, get him. And the OBD socket is just under here, under the dash. Standard OBD socket and plug it in. Okay, so I have the OBD socket plugged in and I've propped the scanner up on the top of the dash. I'm going to switch the ignition on. You see the dash lighting up. Okay, so on the scanner we select our vehicle, which is Vauxhall. Are we ready for that? We're going to automatically select the software. It tells us our VIN number. And we're just going to go for a health report. And let that do its thing for a while. Okay, it's now done, it's scanned, and it's come up with uh, a fault code there. Let's just see if we can see what that one is. We're going to read the fault codes. Okay, so <clears throat> we've got our fault code. Uh, fan control free circuit open so it's an open circuit and you can see the fault code there is p0482-00 okay what i'm going to do is uh clear that fault code and then we will rescan to make sure that there is definitely a fault so, okay, it's saying, let's just check, it should show that that is clear. Oh no, it's still there. Okay, so we definitely have a fault. Okay, so I've got the bonnet open. Um, we're gonna do a quick visual inspection. Uh, let's have a look down here. Now you can see, this is the block connector that goes down to the fan motor so we give that a wiggle there's no obvious signs of damage to that have a look at the fan itself I might need to get a light so you can see what's going on bear with me a sec okay so I've stuck a light on and you can see the back of the fan here I don't know if it's in the way all right there's no obvious signs of any problem all right we could just see if the motor is seized get my hand on that and yeah that is and you can't actually see me moving that but very difficult to move I think there's a distinct possibility that the fan has seized we'll do a few other checks first okay so I'm in auto data I've typed in the registration number of our Corsa uh, click on the link to search for it 
just check that I've got the right vehicle. It's the Vauxhall Corsa 1.3 CD Ti. So yes, that's a correct vehicle. Uh, I've got uh, groups of technical information available. I need some electrical information. I'm looking for wiring diagrams. So I'm going to look in the electrical section, scroll down. There's my wiring diagram section. So have a look at that. Uh, over on this side of the page, there's a list of all the diagrams that are available. Now we're looking for a diagram that relates to the cooling system. So let's have a look down through. And right down here, here we go, right at the bottom here is interior heating and engine cooling. So click on that one. That brings the diagram that I want to the top of the page. So I'll click on the link there and it opens up the diagram that we're after. I'm just going to zoom out so you can see more of it. Okay, zoom back in a little bit. Okay, when we get to this point, we've got uh, some options in terms of how we identify what components are. I could just move my cursor over components and hover over them and it will identify what those components are. And that one there is a heater air conditioning blower motor that's the one inside the car not the one that we're looking for or i can use the search facility over here now we're looking for the blower motor the fan blower motor so if i put blower and uh, it's brought up some options okay so uh, let's click on the engine coolant blower motor it brings up a generic picture so that we know that we're looking at the right area, right thing. And I'm just going to close that. And it's highlighted my blower motor. Let's zoom back out again so you can see more of it. OK, so the first thing you will notice now is that there are two blower motors. They've got the same number. All right. Uh, the reason for that is that there are different options available on courses. Now, this option here just has a single relay switching the current to the motor and it will work at full speed only. This option here, which is in between these dotty gray lines, it's a different option, has a two speed arrangement. Okay, so we just go back up. We've got two relays one for the slow speed one for the high speed if we look at the slow speed supply the current's going to come down through this uh, red wire that has a yellow tracer and it will go to the blower motor via this resistor what the resistor will do is uh, drop the voltage down because of the resistance it offers so the current that's flowing through this part of the circuit into the motor will be at a lower voltage and so the motor will spin slower whereas if we switch it via this relay then the current can flow directly to the blower motor and the motor would work at high speed so there are two options a two speed option or a single speed option now it's common for vehicles that have air conditioning to have a two-speed option fitted right, so the vehicle we have in the workshop is two uh, has air conditioning remember the customer complained that the problem occurred once they switched the air conditioning on uh, so there's a good chance that it's this setup uh, also the fault code indicated that there was a problem with circuit number three so uh, let me just show you something else over here bring out the options sorry and uh, i'm going to put blower in again just get rid of that put blower something else that popped up earlier actually okay on the relay you've got relay one or relay three all right which is the relay for circuit three. Remember the fault code was circuit three. So if I click on that one, it shows you what the relay looks like, and it identifies that it's in this circuit that has uh, 
can close that, sorry, in this circuit that have, for the two speed motor. Sorry, for some reason that's not moving back up. There we go. Okay, so uh, I want to trace where that relay gets its feed from. So uh, if we trace this wire back, bear with me, back through here, you can see that that relay uh, is protected by fuse number nine, which is a 40 amp fuse according to Autodata. So I want to check fuse number nine and this relay, which is the relay for the um, circuit number three, uh, I want to check that they are fully functional. So I need to identify, uh, locate where they are on the car. So I'm going to go back uh, to this section here. And if we scroll to the bottom of this, it's fuses and relays. And this will take us to some charts that help us identify and locate where components are. Now, again, there are options. This uh, first chart here is uh, it's a, a diagram of the fuse box in the engine bay, but it's for models that were before and up to and including 2007. And this one is for models that are from 2007 onwards. Now, the, the car that we have in the workshop is a 2014 model. So the chances are it will be this one. So I'm going to open up that. And if you remember, it was fuse nine. OK, so let's find fuse nine. OK, and it just confirms that it's uh, the engine coolant blower motor. So I now know where it is. Um, we could also search here because uh, if we want a uh, blower, sorry, Type that in there, blower, relay, engine coolant blower, relay three. Click on that one. There we go. It takes us to this position here. So I now know uh, that I need to check this relay and this fuse. So we go back to the car and have a look at those components. So we've had a look on our wiring diagram and we've identified which fuse needs to come off. So I'm going to lift the fuse box lid off over there. And according to the auto data, it's this fuse here and this relay here that control the, the fan on its third speed. Okay, so start with checking that fuse. Okay, so they can be a bit awkward to, to pull out, so I'm going to use some pin nose pliers. And just tease that out gently. There we go, there's the actual fuse. And let's just rearrange that so that you can see. Okay, it's difficult to see whether that has blown. Looks like it may have done, but we'll test it with a, a multimeter and see. Okay, so we've got our multimeter out. And you can see we've got the fuse there. Okay, I switched the multimeter to measuring ohms. And at the moment, you can see because the probes aren't together, it's showing open loop. So test that it's calibrated, put the probes together. And you can see uh, that should theoretically go to zero. Let's take it apart. It goes open loop. Put it back together again. Sort of flashes on zero, goes very low. Okay, that's good enough. Okay, so let's just check for continuity on my fuse. Oh, so I'm back probing into the female connector on one side and on the other side, and you can see it's still open loop. Okay, so that fuse has definitely blown. I might just pop the plastic cover off so you can see, a, have a better look inside. So let's see if I can do that while I'm still on screen. There you go, they are a bit fiddly. Okay. 
hopefully you can see it's definitely blown just tease that in there you can see the connection has actually melted away okay so that fuse is definitely blown all right but that's not the problem that's a symptom of the problem something has caused a surge in current flow which has caused that fuse to blow now this is a 60 amp fuse you can see on the back there all right so that's a lot of current okay now as we sort of noticed earlier the fan was difficult to turn okay so the, the indications are that the motor is seized now a seized motor will draw a huge amount of current right, the more difficult it is to turn the motor the more current is demanded and that's probably what's caused the fuse to blow all right so we'll check okay so i just wanted to give you a rough idea of how to get the radiator out i want to start with removing the coolant ex expansion tank so let's just remove this bolt here which i've already loosened off so uh, let's just finish taking that off Once the tank's out of the way, <clears throat> give it a wiggle. It's difficult with one hand, I'm trying to hold the camera at the same time. Once that's out of the way, uh, hopefully you can see down here, I might have to rearrange the lights, but there are, uh, it's difficult to see with the camera. I'm trying to get down here, but down inside here, the fan casing is held on with a couple of uh, bolts. Uh, if I get the fan out, I'll show you where the bolts are. Okay, so I've uh, taken the, there's three bolts hold the fan cowling onto the back of the radiator. I've got those out. So the fan is now, uh, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, sorry, the camera's gone the wrong way. Let's try that. So the fan is now, uh, you can see it's loose, but there's a lot of uh, cables, etc., in the in the way. So just want to show you that I'm going to remove those. Uh, I've already loosened these two bolts here. So just pull those off. Oh, easier said than done, but anyway, I'm going to take those bolts off and uh, this loom here now, just to show you how those clips come off. Uh, basically, they are poppers. If you zoom in there and give that a squeeze. Sorry. Squeeze them down and it pops out through. You can see there. All right, there's uh, probably another one here somewhere. There's one. Down through. Okay, so we're going to get the loom out of the way. I'll stop the camera for a second. Okay, so uh, these bolts here, as I say, I've loosened them, but I'm just going to take them out. And then the this bracket here should move out of the way. There we go. We'll figure about with that in a moment. So you don't lose the bolts, just stick them back in. That's always a good idea. Don't muddle them up with any of the other bolts that hold the radiator on, etc. Okay, so just gonna shut the camera down again, just to tidy up a bit, and hopefully get that radiator out, uh, the fan out, sorry. So I've now removed the fan cowling and the fan. Uh, I did have to disconnect the hose connections. I don't know if you can see down here. Let's try coming around from this angle. So I had to remove the top hose and that's why there's a drain tray down there and um, disconnect a few other cables. But the fan is now out. Okay, I'm going to zoom in, try and zoom in. 
stick my finger in there, but you can see, I'll get real close, that uh, the motor has got very hot at some point, so much so that it's melted the plastic casing around it. And if I try and move the fan, it doesn't move at all. Actually, let's just move that light. Yeah, right, it's difficult to move. All right, so it's partially seized, which is causing the fuse to blow. Okay.